So in any case, um, welcome everyone again, virtually at least to Cambridge and virtually to one of our um, seminars here from the Center for Intellectual Property and Information Law. Um, my name is Henning Gross Roos Khan. I'm one of the co-directors together with Lionel Bentley of the center. Uh, it's in fact the first time I'm hosting one of these virtual events. We've done many, many in person for the last couple of years. Uh, but that this time with the pandemic, of course, we've got to be virtual, but that allows us also to bring in people which we otherwise would have perhaps not been able to always get to come to Cambridge. And that's one of the particular instances we have today. So I'm, I'm really, really happy and very pleased to be able to introduce to you Ms. Javadi Farazadi, and I hope uh, Sanas that I pronounced that halfway correct. Um, uh, Ms. Javadi Farazadi is an IP trade lawyer and lecturer and consultant to international organizations, local governments, uh, has worked in academia and has uh, advised the UN and the European Union on IP and trade matters. She's currently mainly working with the Swiss IP Institute, with WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization, with the International Trade Center, UNCATAD, and a range of other organizations in Geneva, and including also the U EU IPO in Alicante. Um, she's currently on a project with the EU IPO, in fact, and um, the vice president organization of women in international trade in Geneva. She's got a master in international IP law, LLM in international trade law, and just doing a doctorate in intellectual property. So Ms. Uh, Javadi is going to speak to us about geographical indications, protection in the UK, and implications of Brexit and how and what we might be expecting perhaps post-Brexit. Um, so Sanas, I'm just going to hand over to you. Uh, we're going to basically talk, uh, hear from you for around about 40 minutes. After that, we're going to do uh, or have time for questions and answers for another perhaps 15 to 20 minutes, after which we'll wrap up so that everyone can sort of get some dinner or whatever else, depending on the time zone you're in, um, at what is going to be around 6.30 UK time. So Sanas, I'm going to turn over to you. Thank you again so much for joining us, and we look forward to your talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Henning. Thank you so much for providing me this wonderful opportunity. Hello, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon. I don't know from which countries you are joining us tonight. Uh, as uh, introduced by Penny, my name is Sanas Javadi Farahzadi. I'm an IP and trade lawyer based in Geneva, Switzerland, with extensive work experience with different uh, UN agencies, including WIPO, International Trade Center, Swiss Federal Institute of Intellectual Property, and I'm currently working with EU IPO and the gender aspect of uh, GI system in ASEAN region. So today, I'm because the time is really short, and this is one of the shortest presentations I've ever done during at least the last year during the pandemic time. So I'm just trying to be so quick, and, and I don't know from which background you're participating today, because I'm going to address some generalities of uh, GIs. I cannot deep dive to intellectual property system because of the shortage of time. Normally, I address a general aspect of intellectual property assets management, as well as branding aspects of intellectual property system. But today, I'm going to just address GI issues from general perspective. And uh, if the time allows, I'm going to also address some case studies from developing countries in Latin America and ASEAN region. And of course, meanwhile, I'm going to address what's the current situation in UK after Brexit. So what is geographical indications or GI? According to the general definition that word intellectual property or WIPO provides, a GI is a name or a symbol or a sign that can somehow specify or differentiate a product that is really produced or is related to a certain region and this product quality and specification and reputation is linked to that region. And of course, in most cases for the production of such GI products, the traditional know-how and traditional knowledge and cultural heritage is also involved. 
Some of the very uh, renowned GIs, as you might know, is Darjeeling Tin, and I would assume that everyone knows Darjeeling Tin, especially in UK, Cafe de Colombia, Ceylon Tea, and Oku White Honey from Cameroon, Africa. GI products are uh, this distinctive signs that can, uh, rather than ag mere agriculture products, they can also protect handicrafts and artistal products in developed, developing and least developed countries. And so what is the situation of this? Uh, the whole GI system is that GI is not, as I mentioned, is not only related to agriculture products, it can also relate and protect handicrafts like the Kashmir Pashmina in India, Persian carpet, or Thai silk. GI system is uh, of such an importance in uh, especially developing and least developed countries, especially in agriculture economies and that in certain countries in Asia, and of course in European Union, they have developed national or regional logos for identification and uh, distinction of the local products. Like you can see in this uh, slide that are like the national uh, GI logo for the Cambodian products, for the Laotian products, for Chinese products, as well as the products that are being produced or sold in European Union level. Sorry that I have to be so quick. I'm just trying to pass by the slides so that I can address the generalities and deep dive to the UK system because of the lack of time. So if you have any questions, you can address it now so that I can answer uh, at the end of the session. What is uh, indicated by uh, uh, FAO, which is the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations is that GI is the local development or local innovation of the local communities. And it can link a product to a particular region and it can as I mentioned, uh, protect agriculture and handicraft. And in certain countries, it can also protect industrial products. And in some countries, such as Brazil, it can also protect the services. And of course, it indicates the qualities and reputation and the specification that are associated with certain geographical region. And as I mentioned, for the GI product, it's in most cases, the traditional knowledge of indigenous people or local communities is indicated. And what is the difference between GI system and the trademark system is that uh, GI is permanently protectable. So as long as you have the product being produced in a certain region, you can have the legal protection uh, so that the whole, all the local producers or producers uh, active uh, in a certain region, they can use that GI logo or GI uh, name. And of course, GI uh, logo or GI as a like a regional brand is always used as a major component of quality management for the local products so that they can enter the premium or niche markets. So uh, GI system has a lot of uh, economic and non-economic uh, advantages, and it can contribute to provide better quality management of the products, especially now under the pandemic uh, issue. And of course, the necessary necessity of having the access to more safe uh, food products. Uh, this is where GI can play, uh, play more important role. And of course, in GI system, the focus is more on the quality products rather than the quantity of the product. And it can provide the local producers so that they can uh, enhance the business competitiveness of their pro uh, product in local, regional, and international markets. So GI is a very effective branding tool so that producers can enter export markets and it can always bring because of the high quality that GI products provide it can always provide the local producers with higher income in exchange for the high quality products that they provide to the consumers 
And because of the high quality of the products, consumers are willing to pay uh, higher prices, more prices to, to purchase such quality products in order to have a better, like uh, uh, um, safer uh, food uh, products or uh, as well as organic, the case of organic products. And as I mentioned, the rather than economic uh, uh, benefits for the local producers, for the farmers, for the producers active in the supply chain, it can also bring additional values for the other producers not using the same GI uh, system in the same region, which we call it a spillover effect. And it can also uh, boost and enhance the rural development and tourism in their region. Maybe it's better to, for me like to, to somehow address some of the case studies so that you can uh, understand it better and then I go back to the UK, uh, UK situation at a later stage. And because of the control system that is uh, being uh, applied under GI system by the GI organization that I will describe in the next few slides, we can have a better redistribution of the added value of the product in, in the production of the product so that we can have the fair and equal distribution of the income inside the uh, product value chain as well. And of course, because of the enhancement of business competitiveness of the regional products and the rural development of the region, we can somehow prevent migration to urban areas and we can create more employment uh, opportunity for local producers. And of course, because of the, again, the control system that GI system applies, we can have better quality products with better environmental effects and also for preserving natural resources. And of course, a positive impact on tourism and eco-tourism. So one of the, the other uh, reasons for using the GI system is prevention of the uh, imitation or fake products in the market. So we can see in this uh, slide that we, we have different sort of advantages coming out of GI system, economic advantages and a spillover effect to other products and other sectors in the region, social sustainability and social inclusion of all, uh, how do you call it, like producers or retailers uh, active in the region, and of course, involvement of more women and employment of more women in the region, and of course, having more environmental positive impacts and food security. And I'm going to describe why uh, we will have these uh, uh, advantages out of GI system. The whole idea and the whole concept of GI system comes from uh, negotiations in WTO and from TRIPS agreement articles 22 to 25, uh, to 24. And of course, uh, under TRIPS agreement, all the uh, products uh, whose name has been, which name has been uh, become common or generic, they cannot be protected under GI system because uh, like why, what we say under trademark system, in order to have GI system in place, we should have a distinct distinctive sign so that we can differentiate the products of a certain market. So if name of a product has become generic, we cannot register it as GI anymore. And as you can see, we have at the moment more than 88 uh, UK products that are protected under GI system, including food products, wine, beers, ciders, sweet drinks, and wool. And beside WTO and TRIPS agreement, we of course, we have word intellectual property or WIPO administration of certain uh, treaties for, uh, for the international protection of GIs. 
such as Paris Convention, Madrid system, Lisbon system, uh, which of course I will describe later on that in certain countries such as US, we don't have accepted GI system and we can uh, protect the GI uh, names under trademark uh, systems such as uh, collective marks or certification marks. This is why we can use the Madrid system for this regard. As I mentioned, GIs are closely related to trademarks because both uh, signs are distinctive signs that they can differentiate products in the market. And they can also uh, always uh, specify certain products in the market compared uh, to the other uh, competitor companies' uh, products in the local or international market. But GI system or GIs and trademarks are uh, different in two ways. One is that a trademark is always differentiating a particular company products or services. While GI is always differentiating the products of a place, products of all producers located in a certain region. And of course, because of the linkage to the place of origin, GIs cannot be assigned or licensed to third parties. So GIs uh, opposite to trademarks cannot be licensed or franchised to third parties. So the, the GI rights are collective rights and regional uh, rights, which belong to the all producers active in the certain region and producing certain products under certain rules and regulations. So this right cannot be assigned to the people out of that certain region or community. It's really difficult to tackle behind the laptop with seeing no one. And uh, it's like, I, I wish so we can get rid of pandemic as soon as possible, because this is really like, I would like to have a better interaction with the audience, but unfortunately this is the current situation. So like the other IP rights, GI protection is also territorial. So in order to have GI protection for your local products, you should always protect your products under the national phase in your national country. And then afterwards, you can seek the protection in other third countries, including EU or UK. And of course, there are so many uh, ways of protection in regional or international level to bilateral or multilateral agreements, as I mentioned, like the systems that are administrated by WIPO and also regional schemes such as EU. And of course, national phase uh, for a uh, new UK scheme for protection of geographical indication that I will discuss today. So beside uh, GI sui generis, um, system that in certain countries, including UK, there are regulations governing GI protection. In some countries like US, for example, we don't have a sui generis system on GI protection and GI names or GI signs or GI products are protected under trademark system. And in different countries, there are different uh, mechanism applied for the protection of the local products rather than GIs or trademark regulations. And there are some other scattered provisions under uh, consumer protection laws, unfair competition laws, and of course, local uh, and specific rules of business associations or producers associations uh, established in each and every region. So these are like the, the summary of the benefit of GI protection, the economic uh, advantages which contributes to the higher prices of the uh, quality products or premium products. And of course, linked to boosting the rural area and tourism, creation of more jobs and employment and a spillover effect that I described. 
better quality management of the pro uh, products and uh, preservation of natural resources and cultural heritage and positive impacts on the environment. What is different again between GI and trademark is that for GI system to be effective and efficient, we need to have a GI organization in place. And GI organization is an interprofessional body or organization that can bring together all producers, all actors, retailers, traders, operators active in the certain geographical region. And all these producers should sit together, agree together on certain rules, how to produce certain product, how to process, how to package, how to put uh, pricing, how to advertise for the products, how to do the marketing strategies, how, uh, where to export and uh, which quality management rules to apply. And all the producers and supply, uh, supply chain actors, they should uh, uh, actually agree on certain rules such as, uh, which is named book of a specification or code of practice which can uh, which describe the good and production methods and the GI name shall be used only for the goods produced in accordance with the specifications already determined in the book of a specification and agreed by all producers. So GI system is a collective action. It's a collective action which needs the commitment of the whole or like all the producers that are active in the region and they are willing to use the GI logo. And of course, for again, for GI registration, and uh, GI protection, there should be always a proven link to show that this certain product quality and specification is attributable to certain region because of the climate, because of the soil, because of the uh, people, uh, skills, traditional knowledge and human factors. So as I mentioned in different countries, there could be different regulations uh, for GI. To be applied and one of the local regulations and directives that can be applied uh, among the producers in a certain uh, geographical region is the code of practice and in the code of practice which is basically a document that is establishing the rules for use of the geographical indication all product specification ingredients or raw materials uh, process of the production, the quality, the production area and delimitation, the labeling rules, uh, marketing rules and control system should be identified. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, all the producers and traders active in a certain region, they have to agree on this code of practice and when they are uh, going to register a product under GI system, they have to attach this quota, uh, code of practice to their uh, GI application. One of the very important uh, issues regarding uh, GI is that GI is some sort of partnership or cooperation between public or government sector together with private sector. Public or government plays a role for protection of the uh, local products and providing the infra legal infrastructure or protection infrastructure for local producers. And of course, at the same time, private sector as the main beneficiary and user of the G uh, GI system. So for both sectors, there should be some sort of commitment. And of course, among all producers as well, there should be some sort of commitment so that all these producers see themselves committed to the GI rules to labeling rules, to pricing rules, to marketing rules, and as well as uh, respecting the quality of the certain product. So this means that if the, uh, one of the producers is not respecting the GI rules, which is already agreed on the 
code of practice, this producer cannot uh, take the advantage of GI protection anymore and would be out of GI uh, uh, system, basically. And this has happened in my uh, previous uh, projects that I was directly or indirectly involved on behalf of uh, World Intellectual Property Organization. We had this difficulty in some certain least, like some of the least developed countries in Asia that uh, some of the local producers because of the lack of the knowledge of the importance of the GI system or because they were already uh, uh, somehow successful in the market and they had a very well established brand in the market, they were not willing to cooperate and commit to the GI system and they wanted to go ahead individually uh, under their own um, initial brand or company brand or company trademark. So you really had difficulties to engage all these big producers that they had some sort of monopoly over the market. And in the end, uh, what happened was that the local government asked us not to engage these local producers that are somehow getting problematic on the way of establishment of the GI system for the local products. So this is where the importance of uh, commitment of the local producers and cooperation among themselves uh, come into play. So what is the situation in UK at the moment? So we all know that we had Brexit and we had the expiry of the withdrawal agreement at the end of 2020. So from the beginning of this year, we have a new GIS scheme to be applied in UK, but to and to be managed by the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs or DEFRA in UK. So the GI issues from now on would be managed by DEFRA and other types of uh, IP protection such as trademarks or patents or designs as before they would continue to be managed by UK IP office. And under a new UK GI system, all the producers in UK or outside that, or outside that are selling their products in UK market, they can take the advantage of this new system. And of course, uh, having the newest scheme in UK is a, as a part of UK, obligations under TRIPS agreement in WTO. And so all the products that are sold in Great, Great Britain, England, Scotland, and Wales would be covered under the U UK new GI scene. Sorry again that I'm so fast because I'm just trying to get to the case study so that, so that you can understand the situation better. So as I mentioned on the expiry of the transition period of last month, EU GI system is not effective in UK anymore. And at present, of course, there is no initial or substantive uh, difference between regulations uh, or substance of uh, UK or GI uh, schemes rather than the territory that they are being applied. So the substance of both regulations are the same, but of course, EU scheme is not being applied in UK anymore. And under the new GI scheme, all agri-food products, wines, uh, aromatized wines, spirit drinks are being protected under UK GI system. An EU GI scheme will continue to protect all products being sold in European Union level and Northern Ireland. Uh, before I forget, so for uh, those who are interested to read more about uh, this new scheme, of course, I couldn't have the access to the colleagues in DEFRA department because of the shortage of time. You can have uh, all the information uh, available on the website. And of course, on, uh, you can also find the 
relevant EU information on EC web website. So I extracted all this information from the government website before I forget to mention. So, so again, under the uh, like we had this uh, some sort of way of uh, three ways of protection for local product under EU level, and the same rules are gonna apply under UK GI scheme, which is protection of designation of origin or PDO, protected geographical indication PGI, and traditional specialty guaranteed or TSG. For the ones who doesn't know about these terms. PDO is going to be applied on the products that uh, majorly are their, their way of pro uh, protection or raw, raw materials or the major part of the process has been done in a certain region. For the protected geographical indication, this degree of protection in a certain geographical region is less than PDO, so it's not 100%. If some part of the products or raw materials are related into a certain geographical region, we can use the PGI system. And for traditional specialty guaranteed or TSG, this is not related to a certain uh, geographical region, but it's related to certain traditional knowledge or method for protection of the certain product. So under the new scheme, uh, we can apply three different levels of protection based on the level of production or the process of certain products. And all existing UK products registered under EU GIS scheme by the end of transition period will remain effective under U UK GI system. So they will somehow transfer to be protected under UK GI scheme and they will not be canceled. And the registered GIs that can be produced anywhere out of Ireland will continue to be fully protected in UK and EU, such as Irish whiskey, Irish cream or Irish Party. As I mentioned, you can have the access to all information on DEFRA website. For better usage of a new GI uh, scheme in UK, DEFRA has issued a guidance, uh, like I think it was at the end of uh, 2020, explaining how UK trademark system can interact with GI protection from the beginning of this year. And of course, there are some other information available on the priority between trademarks and GI for the rights filed within nine months of the transition period under the trademark business guidance. So for the time being, in order to protect your uh, local products under UK scheme, you can use two different uh, guidance for GIs and for the trademark uh, for protection of your, your local products. And these are the issues uh, that you can protect under uh, GI scheme. You can, of course, uh, you, uh, um, use the scheme for registration of your product's name, or there are also some aspects regarding the protection of US wines and spirit in UK. And of course, these wine and spirit, as I mentioned, are not according to US system. They are not uh, protected under GI system, but they are registered in order to prevent registration of the similar trademark uh, to the names of these American products in UK. So any sort of application for the UK GI scheme, any sort of use of uh, GI names, a change of the product specification, cancel, canceling a certain product name, and any sort of appeal or using of the logos and labeling rules are all guided under the guidance that are, is issued by DEFRA. I don't have time to go to the details of the guidance, 
but under the uh, logo, uh, the labeling and the logo part of the guidance, uh, the product can take the advantage of three different uh, labels or logos in UK and producers and retailers, they can have time for almost uh, uh, three years to make changes uh, to the logo they use for packaging and marketing and advertising in the market. So what will happen to the outstanding application for EU GIs uh, at the moment? So as I mentioned, the EU GI application will continue to progress and if granted, will apply to EU member states and Northern Ireland. So the applicant should apply separately to DEFRA for protection in England Scotland and Wales. I think some parts maybe they are not so much clear because this guidance and the, the newest scheme is quite like it's not even one month old yet. Uh, so I think there would be so many discussions and debate on the newest scheme in UK. And I'm not a UK expert, of course, but I just try to somehow extract the major points that I deemed uh, maybe relevant for the today's presentation. And uh, so who is eligible or who can apply to register a GI in UK? Any entity that is uh, any sort of like, because there is no limitation for the application of the, for GI application in UK, but if the applicant is not based in England, Wales, or Scotland, or Northern Ireland, they have to, I mentioned this in the beginning of my presentation, they have to seek the protection in their home nation or their local countries prior to making any application to DEFRA for UK registration. One of the issues that you might know is that intellectual property provisions and of course GI issues are mostly included in the free trade agreements formerly between EU and third countries and for the uh, from now on between UK and uh, like a business or a trade counterparts. So one of the effective uh, uh, FTAs that are is uh, enforced at the moment is UK ja uh, Japan uh, free trade agreement, which is protecting UK goods such as Scottish salmon, Scottish beef, Scottish lamb, Welsh lamb, or other products under the trade agreement. And therefore, uh, under the previous uh, FDA between UK and Japan, only seven UK products were protected under GI system in Japan. But now, according to the new free, uh, free trade agreement, uh, up to 70 products of UK are being protected in Japan so that they can have the possibility to enter a Japanese market. And as I mentioned, of course, you should, under the GI system, you should always establish and promote a logo and register this logo as some sort of identity and identification of your product so that you can uh, export your products under this uh, GI logo to export markets. Another uh, trade agreement that is enforced uh, now is the UK and EU trade uh, cooperation agreement, uh, which also covers some generalities on intellectual property, including GIs. And GI protection will continue for this year, uh, like I mean the UK GI products, they will have the same legal protection as before provided that UK has signed a continuity agreement with other countries because UK was a part of EU before and had signed some several FTA. And from now on, if UK has signed a continu uh, continuity agreement with other countries, 
such an Andean community, Chile or Switzerland, all UK products will continue to have the GI protections in these markets. And other EU third country sectorial agreements uh, where UK has also signed a continuity agreement. So if there is no agreement uh, for the time being in place, this means that UK should seek new free, uh, new free trade agreements so that uh, the third countries can protect UK products under GI system or if the trademark system is applied like Canada or US, they can like protect the UK products under uh, collective or certification marks. Sorry that I didn't have time today to uh, include the differences between GI system, trademark system, how they overlap, how we can take the advantage of both systems at the same time, because uh, the time is uh, limited. But of course, as I mentioned, in certain legal systems that you don't have a GI system in place, you can always resort to the collective trademark system. So one of the, uh, because like I have included up to three, four case studies from different countries in Asia and Latin America, that they were really successful uh, case uh, studies of the uh, protection of agriculture products under GI system. One of the famous, the most well-known ones that I thought maybe it's relevant for the UK is Darjeeling tea that of course, before having the GI system, the tea was uh, somehow mixed. The different uh, qualities of the tea was mixed and you know, like the high quality tea was uh, mixed with the low quality tea and they were like a smuggled or they were like exported with the low price or in bulk rather than being branded. And so uh, Indian government came to the conclusion, it's about one century that they came uh, to the conclusion that they have to seek some sort of legal protection so that they can have a, a, a better a market uh, situation or better market position to sell their uh, products. And uh, so a tea board was established to manage all administration and all stages of the tea production and cultivation and processing and marketing in India. And Darjeeling is a, a region of uh, 87 designated gardens in the hill of Darjeeling district in India. There are so many stories and cases about the passing of or misuse of Darjeeling, uh, Darjeeling uh, brand, which of course are all available for free on internet. But uh, the reason, uh, rather than uh, the misuse or imitation of Darjeeling tea in the international market, was also the unique and uh, reputation and the, the unique specification and characteristic that the tea had uh, compared to the other teas in the market. Like so. So the tea board was established and took certain legal and administrative actions for the protection of Darjeeling tea in case of misuse and infringement. And the tea board established a mechanism to protect supply chain uh, to determine the authenticity of the tea sold as Darjeeling, especially in the export market because one of the major functions of the GI system is using the name uh, in international or in export market because of the reputation that is association uh, associated with the local product. And so in 1986, the logo was created and registered in UK, US, Canada, Japan, Egypt and other uh, countries either under trademark system or under GI system in 2004. So for the same product, you can have both a GI system and trademark system in parallel, depending on the, each country that you 
you are willing to seek the protection. And these are the marks that are opposed in different markets that for different, uh, different classes of good and services, either for other um, goods and services rather than agriculture products. And uh, these are some other cases. Uh, I have, I think, three other cases to address, but I'm not sure if we have time. Let me see. Uh, someone has uh, asked me, yeah, the slide would be circulated afterwards for sure, because I don't have enough time to address everything. And I, again, apologize for being super, super fast because I know it, it, it may need more, you know, deep dive and more specification so that you can address the whole situation thoroughly. But of course, yeah, again, I emphasize that because someone asked this question that you can always have both GI and uh, collective or certification mark in place at the same time, depending on the situation. I mean, depending on each market legal system. One of the, before uh, we get to the end of the session, I would like to address one of the initiative that is really active in Asia now is One Village, One Product Program or One District, One, uh, one Product Program that are like in different ASEAN countries in Southeast Asia. They are protecting the local products of different regions of each country. And one of the very interesting uh, programs is OVOP or One Village One uh, Product Program in Cambodia for the sake of promotion of rural economic growth in South Cambodia, especially and improving the living standard, standard of the people through improvement of local brands. And again, preventing uh, immigration to urban areas and producing products with export, uh, export potentials like for protection of high quality products. And under this initiative, the government of Cambodia could seek the protection of the first uh, national GI for uh, compote pepper, compote and pepper two provinces in South Cambodia. And of course, at the same time for the sugar and to seek the national registration in the Ministry of Commerce in 2010, and then registration in WTO, recognition by WTO in 2010, registration in Vietnam and Thailand as the major neighboring countries, like neighboring uh, export countries in 2016 and 2017, and in European Union in 2016. And compost pepper, or like the, because I mentioned to you before that some countries such as Cambodia, they also rather than regional brands, they also use a national logo or national brand in order to identify their products. Uh, so this is one of the products that the, the government of Cambodia is using the re both regional and national branding for the sake of export, especially to European Union. So I don't know how much time is left. So I think we might have to wrap up, uh, Sanas, just to be yeah. sure that we have maybe about a couple of minutes of question time left. So maybe one or two minutes, if you can wrap up in with, within that time, and then we have a bit of time left for questions, if that would be OK. Yeah, that would be perfect, because I now I'm receiving the questions now. Uh, so yeah, for sure. So I, as I briefly described today, like the whole GI system is a very vast and wide area to be discovered. And of course, it's still under development, even if you refer to the international protection system compared to the trademark system, you can see that under Lisbon system for the international protection of GIs, you have less member states and less uh, signatories compared to the Madrid system for international protection of trademarks. So GI system is still under development. It needs more awareness raising and more training, more recognition. And uh, someone has uh, asked me about the, the legal research about the GI uh, in Mexico, like the textile protection of textile in Mexico through GI system. And of course, uh, 
I mean, this would be like you can. I think I have. Uh, I have uh, my. Let me put you my email in the last slide. You can drop me questions afterwards because this is a very you know like interesting point to address for the Mexico. I haven't been engaged in any project in Mexico, but if you require general knowledge on how to define the policies in. Uh, Mexico, I would be more than happy to provide you with uh, information. And uh, another question is uh, whether I can comment on the reason why UK has registered so few GIs compared to France, Spain, or Italy, and whether this will change after Brexit. I mean, up to my knowledge, as I mentioned, I'm not a UK expert and I couldn't have the possibility. If I was in UK, I could gather information, but being in Switzerland and having access to the updated information is really difficult. I tried to find or contact a few people in UK government to get updated information about the future policies or approach in this regard, but up to now I have got no response. But one of the things that I think maybe is relevant is maybe because, as I mentioned, most countries were so much trademark oriented in the past and they were rather like basically even using collective or certification marks or individual trademarks rather than GIs. So now the system is evolving, especially after pandemic and because of the food security reasons, the, the governments, the countries have come to the conclusion that GI system is quite important and is relevant for the sake of the food safety, environmental aspect, and of course, for the differentiation of the product in international markets. So I think this is why UK is getting more and more active because uh, of course the, the, the advantages is more known at the moment. And of course, the, the, there are so many uh, different products in the market in uh, Great Britain, in Scotland, so that, uh, I mean, they need protection. So I, I would assume in near future, we will have more protection of UK products. To be honest with you, even for me, it was a big question why UK was not that active before this. But anyways, I think after getting out of the European Union and after Brexit, we will see more, uh, uh, how do you call it, more initiatives from UK uh, in future. I'm quite sure about this. And this is one of the very first things being done in UK. So you can see that not so many organizations are active in the field of GIs in UK. So this would be a great opportunity to, to start to work on the matter in terms of policy perspective, academic research, or practical projects. So another question, I'm going to answer the last question. And uh, I think uh, you can always uh, you know, contact me on my email address, or you can find me on LinkedIn. I would be more than happy to respond. So another question is regarding the control process, the commitment uh, prepared, uh, the commitment by the producers, authorized and ratified national government, or are producers free to set what a standard they want? No, actually for setting that, this is a very relevant question. Thank you so much. Uh, for setting all the regulations and all practices on how to produce a product, how to process a product, product how to package a product or, or how to do the marketing or even the pricing, the initial phase comes, the initial agreement comes from the producers themselves. But when it goes, in most cases, when it goes to the quality management part, because there's in most cases, it's a government authority who would uh, approve the certain quality in the product. This is where the government comes into play. So, but in in other cases, some in some countries maybe you no, know, they use the uh, private certification bodies. Uh, so it really depends on each and every country mechanism. So it could be either the government side or it could be the private side, and as long as the regulations doesn't distort the local market or the local competition, the producers are uh, somehow free to set the rules uh, that they want for the sake of the promotion of their product under the regional uh, branding mechanism. 
but this is really really a good question i have to also uh you know like uh, investigate more about this how, up to what extent uh, producers are bound to the government uh, uh the i mean the local government regulations so uh henning i think uh we're almost done um i don't know if we have i think we have maybe only three minutes left so okay. yeah well thanks a lot uh, sanas that was excellent a really sort of uh, comprehensive tour de force through um GI protection uh, in general, the international dimensions, various case studies, and I understand you would have had some more, but um, I think you mentioned already you would be perhaps willing to share your slides. So sure. if that's the case, then of course, uh, people will be able to find that on our website, or I guess they could also approach you using the email address here. Uh, so they will be able to see these further case studies. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you've also made my job as chair really, really easy because you've managed uh, the questions yourself. So that was not, nothing I Sorry. Asked. Yeah, that's <laughs> because of the lack of the time, I was like jumping. I was really quick. I haven't been this quick all my life. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Maybe maybe if you allow, I, um, I know we need to sort of wrap up very soon, but if I can just ask one final question, sort of abuse my privilege as a chair here, also because I don't see any other questions coming up. So you've spoken um, about the code of practice and you've spoken about various regulatory mechanisms and other aspects which you need to put into place in order to significantly benefit from a GI system. And that's on the perhaps national level first, but then you want to perhaps also obtain, um, uh, in order to reach international markets, you want to obtain protection abroad and so on. So I'm just wondering, um, because all of that, of course, doesn't come for free, right? There's, there's, there are certain barriers to entering this system, which are going to be costly to some extent. So is there a general formula to say, okay, um, it makes sense to do this um, once you've reached a certain, you know, degree of commercialization of a product or once you have a certain amount of funds available to you in order to do this because as it doesn't come for free and unless you have maybe you know international donors or others paying for this it's not going to be something which every single small producer in a, in a low-income country will be able to do so uh, is there like a general formula is or is that just a question of case by case to say when it makes economically sense to use GI as a route for uh, commercializing your products? Thank you. Yeah, this is a very a good question, Henning. Uh, actually, what I did in the past what, and what I'm doing now, interacting with the local producers and business association is that before, it's not even related to GI itself. It, this is related to each and every IP right. Before seeking the legal, legal protection, you should have the feasibility study and the market assessment. If you don't see market potentials or if you don't see enough market potentials or market competitiveness, it would be, as you mentioned, the waste of budget and fund and waste of time because I witnessed this in Southeast Asia. They were, the local government was willing to push for the protection of the local products that they didn't have market uh, enough market value or enough market potential. So the, what I would suggest is that before seeking, because you know, establishment of the GI system is really time consuming and uh, expensive. It's not a, like a single trademark, you submit your trademark application and that's it. You know, so, okay, you do advanced search this and that, but for GI systems, sometimes it takes three to a few years time so that you can establish GI system in a certain region for one single product. So before seeking such a protection, I would even for UK, I would highly recommend to assess the market potential first before going uh, further. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Sanas. I think that's that's a very good sort of in a way, reality check uh, point to close on also because it generally, as you said, because it's not only about uh, GIs, it generally uh, relates to IP. We as lawyers or me perhaps as a lawyer, perhaps we, we tend to focus 
uh, on the law itself, um, not really perhaps always understanding the economic realities surrounding the law and which the law is meant to address ideally. Um, so in that way, I think a very good point to close with that we have to understand the commercial situation more broadly and the ups and downs and whether and to what extent it does make sense to uh, look for that particular route of protection in the case of GIs or what other mechanisms may be equally feasible or better. Um, Sanas, I just want to thank you again so much for your uh, presentation, um, for the uh, handling of all these questions. Uh, thanks for that. Um, maybe at some point when all of this uh, pandemic comes hopefully uh, well to a close or at least sort of allows us to interact more freely again, We'll be happy to welcome you in person in Cambridge as well. Oh, it would be lovely to meet in person at some point. Yeah, but... I'm uh, heading for each and every lawyer. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. But you know, I'm really grateful for, grateful for this opportunity. We, I really, I would like to continue these sessions in future for the sake of, because it's, as I mentioned, we cannot summarize the whole GI system in 40 minutes. And I just you know, like, I still have a lot to talk about. And as you mentioned, I'm trying not to have only legal perspective. I'm trying yeah. to have commercial and trade perspective at the same time. This is what I learned from my manager in WIPO, that the lawyer needs to have a business approach as well at the same time. So, yeah. True, true. And in fact, I mean, uh, as you sort of started to discuss the UK's future on GI, maybe in a couple of years, there's more to say about that as well. Um, so let me just close by also thanking all of our attendees um, and, and thanks uh, Dan for managing all this here uh, late in the afternoon here in the UK. Um, everyone, please take care, stay safe and thank you for joining us and uh, look out for the next CIPL seminars. Sanas, you have a good evening in Geneva and uh, I'll say, you know, all the best to everyone and take care and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.